Hello everybody, Nathan here, and in this video I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to create custom end cards that match up with your video elements. So here we actually have an end card I just made this morning, and this I will throw on with an alpha overlay. All this like lavender purple color will be invisible, so you'll just have the text overlaid on the last 20 seconds of the video. So let's jump right into the creation of this. First off, you want to go into YouTube and edit one of your videos and go to the end screen and annotations and then design your layout here of your elements. I am just going to go ahead and grab one that I've already created. So what I have is I have a subscribe button. I have a link to my website. Let me actually jump forward a few frames. Here we go. Subscribe button, the link to my website. And then I just have two videos here. So these videos can be whatever you want. Now you need to pretty much get a picture of this. So I'm going to go ahead and full screen it. And now I have a full screen image of what my video is and exactly where these elements are going to be. Now when they mouse over, it does cover stuff on those two. These two don't. On uh, mobile, I don't know exactly how that actually works out because I've never done it, but whatever. This gives us our layout of where the four elements are. And pretty much anything in this space is relatively safe to put text on because until someone mouses over something, that text is visible. Keep in mind, it only shows for 20 seconds. So you might not want to go too crazy with text, which my previous example may have been. I don't know. I'm still experimenting with that. But we just need to take a picture. So we're going to hit print screen. If I could find that on my keyboard, here we go. I know I'm actually, I have two monitors set up, so I have two screens showing, but we're just going to go ahead and save this. Now, I am fortunate enough to have a full 1920 by 1080 monitor. If you don't, um, you can use just this image here too. So we're going to go ahead and take another picture of that one and go ahead and save it. And now let's open up the pictures folder where these actually I think these are saved to my home folder yep so we have one let's go ahead and open this with GIMP all right and first thing we want to do is go ahead and crop this video to 1920 by 1080 which is what I just set it to there and now we have the video so all we need to do is well let's create a new layer just because it's a little bit easier to work on a new layer and then i will use the box select and let's go ahead and make a box selection for this element and you can be as precise or as lax as you want it's basically just there so you have an idea and I can hit the delete key, or I can't. Oh, because there's nothing there. Of course I can't delete if there's nothing there. So I'll just color this in, but I want to use black, and I want to have a bigger brush. All right, so this is going to be a space I do not want to create any content on. And then we would go on and do the same for this element, a square for this, a circle for this. We could even put a square for that. It really doesn't matter. Those are just areas to block out where we do not want to create content. Then we want to actually just do some text. So just throw a text box in here and say like, thanks for watching. And a few exclamation points. And then let's go ahead and change the color on that so it's a little more visible. Let's make it a little larger. One of the things I dislike with GIMP and their text tools is there is no drop shadow. It just, it's not there. There's no option to put a shadow in. There's no option to do text outline. I don't know if image editors just don't do this. I know like any desktop publisher or text program will give you those options, but I can't think of any image editor that lets you do it. So there's a hacking method. Just duplicate the layer, take the second layer, highlight all your text there, turn it black, and then use the move tool, zoom in, turn the visibility on the first one off. I'm going to zoom in more, and we're going to move this one pixel down and one to the left to give it a little bit of a drop shadow, and you know what? I'm going to do one more. 
All right, so now it kind of has a drop shadow effect, which makes it a little more readable on any of your surfaces. Another thing you may want to do is throw in some guidelines, which you can do just by clicking on the, the bars there, and you'll just drag and drop out a little line. And these guidelines are actually something that show up on YouTube when you're putting the video in. Um, it pretty much gives you like your safe space. So you should ha definitely not have any content outside of these spaces, assuming you put your items to the very edge, which I do. Anything below here, your um, the timeline will cover. Text throws up on the top here uh, of the full video title and stuff, so that would be covered. You have your share options, your um, menu options and stuff. So those are spaces you want to pretty much kind of keep text out of. And one of the nice things about doing the guidelines here is elements will snap to them. So I have this font or this text here. It'll snap right to that guideline. I don't know if you can necessarily tell, but it kind of snaps to it. So it makes it easier to line things up, of course. Now my drop shadow is only to the one side, whoops, and not to the bottom. But that's how it works when we have the full 1080. Now, if we don't have the full 1080, Let's go ahead and just take a quick peek at how we would do this. We would start with the same steps of cropping the video. And now this assumes, of course, that your videos are being uploaded in 1080. If you're uploading in something other than 1080, that is the size you want to make your end card. I feel like that should be pretty obvious, but I'm gonna mention it anyway and crop it. Okay, so we're looking at an image that is 570 by 321. So we're going to go ahead and go image and scale image. And the width we want to do 1920. They are locked, so this one should change to 1080. It changed to 1081. So I'll we'll just go ahead and manually change it to 1080. Now we have a 1920 by 1080 image, and we would do the exact same thing. Block out our areas, throw on our guides, and then when we go to export, we would just turn off the layers in the background and we would be left with all of our text layers, which we would then simply export as whatever we want to call it, making sure that it is a PNG and making sure I'm going to replace something. It's fine. And making sure that we have, um, yeah, everything here. It's our only options. And then that should be saved. Hey, refresh this image. Oh, here we go. This is the one that it saved over. And then we would just throw this into our image editor or our uh, video editor over the last 20 seconds of video. And then it would show with our text and YouTube would put the end card elements in the places where they were designated in the graphic. And then everything is perfect. Um, I've only just started doing end cards, so these are far from like professional grade or anything but i think it's better than just a little scribble and you know hopefully this is helpful and gives you an idea of how to kind of figure out spacing and stuff i feel like it's pretty pretty simple to do i think even like using ms paint you could probably do this assuming it lets you scale an image which i believe they do i've not used it in years and years so i'm not positive but pretty easy to do i won't have an end card on this because well there's an end card right here which is going to be not the full screen but thanks for watching i'll see you next time